Now, for years, years, I have been saying, why not use the War Games concept at Survivor Series? It makes sense, just in terms of the names. War Games at Survivor Series. You don't need a series of elimination matches anymore. Once a year, you feature a five-on-five, double-ring, double-cage War Games match. Nobody's ever seen anything like that in WWE. The Elimination Chamber is a poor man's War Games. I think that concept would sell. As far as what the teams would be, you know, if they had built this Nexus thing up a little bit better, it would have made perfect sense to do Team WWE against Nexus in a War Games match at Survivor Series instead of doing what they did at SummerSlam, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, I would make War Games the new annual Survivor Series tradition. I think that would work out quite well. It was exactly 12 years ago today, September 25th, 2010, that I recorded Sound Off episode 127, where I gave my business plan for WWE. All of the roster moves I would make, who I would want to sign from other promotions and off the indies, and what my pay-per-view schedule would look like, the names I would use, you know, having three to four different developmental territories like OVW instead of just one, television plans, the website, the Hall of Fame, the wellness policy. I mean, I went into all of it. One of the ideas that I pitched on that episode was revamping the Survivor Series. Survivor Series was always fun when I was a kid, and it was still the Thanksgiving tradition. Then it became the Thanksgiving Eve tradition. Yeah, you had the teams of five or more facing off in in, in elimination format. Yeah, on that very first Survivor Series show, they had a 20-man match. It was 10 on 10 with all tag teams. Vince McMahon only created the Survivor Series as a way to fuck with Jim Crockett Promotions, which started airing, or was about to start airing, Starcade on pay-per-view for the very first time that night. And Crockett countered by moving Starcade to the late afternoon. That way the cable companies could offer both shows as a package deal. Right? And that way everybody wins. Well, that's not what Vince McMahon wanted. He didn't want everybody to win. He wanted to win. And fuck everybody else. So he threatened the cable providers by telling them that if they carried Starcade, they would not be allowed to carry WrestleMania 4. And WrestleMania 3 had been a huge success earlier that year. So he was, you know, kind of hanging that over their head and said, if you want WrestleMania next year, you can't carry their show. And so all but maybe four or five cable companies, they pulled the plug on Starcade and they got crushed that night, which is why Starcade got moved to December the very next year. There have been lots of memorable Survivor Series moments over the years. You know, this year is going to be the 25th anniversary of the Montreal Screwjob. They killed off the invasion angle in 2001. They had Team WWF go over. The next year, they introduced the first ever Elimination Chamber match at Madison Square Garden. And so for years, Survivor Series just kind of lingered and they would do the elimination matches. And then the buy rate for the show took a nosedive in 2009. And 12 years ago, on one of those investor conference calls, Vince McMahon announced that the Survivor Series was being discontinued. He said, We think that the Survivor Series is obsolete as far as that title is concerned. It was something that worked many, many years ago in terms of a creative standpoint, various teams competing. That really is not advantageous as the consumer now looks at what they actually are buying. As opposed to all those years before that, I guess, when people wore a blindfold and they just randomly pushed buttons when they were ready to buy their pay-per-views. I'm not even sure what that means. But that was in February of 2010 that he said that. By June, they changed their mind. They got some backlash to the decision. They changed their mind. And Survivor Series was reinstated, as it should have been. It never should have been discontinued to begin with. All they needed to do was make changes. There was never any reason to cancel the Survivor Series. All it needed was a facelift. And on that podcast in 2010, I pitched the idea of bringing War Games to Survivor Series. You bring those two names together, it just made too much sense to me. It made so much sense, and it would have been the perfect way to freshen up an outdated format. If I don't think that the elimination matches sell anymore, well then try something different. Well, why not try this concept? It's not a surprise that the Survivor Series buy rate dipped so much, you know, that they wanted to get rid of it. We get tag team matches all the time on TV. 
Sometimes four on four, five on five, six on six. That format didn't feel as special as it used to. And WWE was not exactly putting maximum effort into making the show feel special. It was a distant number four on that list of the so-called big four pay-per-views. Junking the elimination concept and bringing war games would breathe new life into the show. Triple H had pitched the idea to Vince McMahon on bringing back war games and he resisted. It wasn't his idea. It wasn't his creation. The Elimination Chamber was a poor man's war games, but at least it was his. It was something they could take credit for creating. I will never understand how they had the chance to use the concept and they let it sit. Dormant. For so many years. Until they lost the rights to use it. But that's exactly what happened. MLW did a war games match in 2003. Years later, when Court Bauer relaunched the promotion, they filed to trademark the name since WWE had no ownership over it. And MLW did another War Games match many years later. So Triple H, finally, he figured, well, if they're not going to use it on the main roster, if Vince doesn't want to use it, I'll use it. I'll use it for NXT. But then he realized that MLW owned the name. So they worked out a deal to acquire the trademark. And War Games became the new annual NXT tradition in 2017. That all came to an end this week with the announcement that Triple H is bringing War Games to Survivor Series at long last. There will be a men's War Games match and a women's War Games match, just like they did in NXT. I mean, we have two Royal Rumble matches, we have two Money in the Bank matches, so you knew there would be two War Games matches. Even better, he said it will not be Raw versus SmackDown, which was such a ridiculous concept the last few years because of the timing of the draft you would shake up the rosters six weeks before the pay-per-view, and then you, you know, they would all have to wear the red shirts and the blue shirts, and they would have to pretend like they would take a fucking bullet for their brand. Give me a break. And they would bill it as the one time a year we get to see the stars of Raw competing against the stars from SmackDown, which is something we see every fucking week on television. It was stupid. And it should have been done away with years ago. In an interview with The Ringer, this is what Triple H had to say. The tradition of Survivor Series has ebbed and flowed and changed slightly over time, but this will be similar to that. This will not be Raw vs. SmackDown. It will be much more storyline-driven. I still look at it as a traditional component to Survivor Series in there because it's large teams of people competing. We just upped the ante a little bit with War Games and made it evolve. Now, he's saying the War Games matches will not be Raw vs. SmackDown. That would seem to leave the door open for other Raw vs. SmackDown matches on the undercard. But the focus is not going to be blue brand against red brand anymore, which is a great move on his part. You know, we got the announcements of the return of War Games and the return of the Fight Pit match all on the same day this week. I'll talk about the Fight Pit match later. Less than a week before that, I was on the NXT Year in Review Roundtable for post-wrestling and I said that I would like to see Triple H revive the Fight Pit concept. If not for NXT, then for the main roster. And here we are. So this has been a happy week for me. But if it wasn't already obvious with the moves that he's made and the people that he's brought back that this is Triple H's show now and not Vince McMahon's show, the fact that he is bringing war games to the main roster is all the proof that you need. He told the ringer, one of the things that Vince used to always say is that if you put yourself in the seats... You can never go wrong. Now all fans have different points of view. All you got to do is go online and you'll see every single person has a different point of view. And they're happy to express it. But I think if you go out there and you think, what would you want to see? If you're a fan and you just love what we do, what would you want to see? Vince McMahon did not want what the fans wanted. He wanted what he wanted. He was a stubborn old man who made money in spite of himself. It's about time that we have somebody running the show who can actually see things from a fan's perspective. Triple H grew up a fan of the wrestling business. He grew up a fan of the War Games matches. Vince McMahon got into it because of his father. He wanted to be anything but a wrestling promoter, it seemed. Going all the way back to the Evil Knievel Snake River Canyon jump that he promoted to the Bodybuilding Federation, to the Football League. Triple H is an old school guy. 
He watched those old War Games matches. Even in the interview, he talked about how frustrating it was when he was younger to see how low those cage ceilings were, like when Brian Pillman got hurt taking that power bomb from Sid Vicious. That's one of the reasons why they did away with the roof to the cage in NXT. And these War Games matches won't have a roof either. That, and they want people to be able to do dives off the top of the cage, because everybody dives. They also allow pinfalls in NXT, which I'm guessing these will too. But traditionally, it was submission or surrender rules. Once all ten men were called into the ring, you have the cage over the two rings, one man starts from each team, and then five minutes later, somebody new enters based on a coin flip, usually a heel, because that way you can set up for the babyface comeback. And then every two minutes, they switch off, and somebody new enters from each team until they're all in. There's nobody left. And only then does it become the match beyond. And now you can try to win the match. Or survive. You don't win war games. You survive war games, as uh, Dustin Rhodes once said. Another reason why doing this on a show called Survivor Series makes all the sense in the world. NXT had some good War Games matches. All but one of them involved the Undisputed Era. The only one that didn't was the last one they did, which was Team Black and Gold against Team 2.0, which I still think is the best match of the 2.0 era. But War Games was not meant to be held in front of 200 people at the Performance Center. War Games was not meant to be held in an empty building with a Thunderdome screen. It deserves a bigger platform than that. The original ones with the Four Horsemen and the Road Warriors and Dusty Rhodes, it was Dusty's creation. Those matches are iconic. Sting Squadron against Paul Heyman's Dangerous Alliance in 1992 is the greatest War Games match I've ever seen. AEW has done a couple of Blood and Guts matches so far, which is their version of War Games. They're bloody, they're violent, and with the right story and the right people involved, they can create great drama which is why the timing of this could not be any better with the Bloodline story going on. Now, I know it's early yet to start fantasy booking these matches, but I would think that you would have damage control on one side of the women's match with two other people, maybe Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. I'm holding out hope maybe they get them together on TV in more of a, a tweener or a heel role coming out of Extreme Rules. So let's say you have them on one side against Becky Lynch, who should be just about all healed up and ready to come back any week now. Get Becky and Ronda on opposite sides of a War Games match. Becky, Bianca, Liv Morgan, Asuka, and Raquel. The men's match. I mean, how do you not have the bloodline on one side? Roman Reigns, the Usos, Solo Sokoa, and Sami Zayn, the honorary Us, against... Seth Rollins, Matt Riddle. Yes, Rollins and Riddle may be forced to team up with Drew McIntyre, Kevin Owens, and maybe, you know, whatever the other name is. Uh, I could see them having Logan Paul in that match. He can be in the spot that Pat McAfee was in when he did that one War Games match in NXT, doing some wacky splash off the top of the cage. Or you could have Sheamus in there, Sheamus and Drew on the same team. I, I might save the Brawling Brutes for a match with Imperium. So maybe you put Braun Strowman in that spot. Whoever it is. Lots of options for who that fifth man could be on the babyface side. But whoever it is, the story is about Sami Zayn likely losing the match for the Bloodline. Doing something that screws the Bloodline out of a win in that match. All without Roman Reigns having to take a pinfall or a submission loss. So we don't have to worry about that. Now, they could do four-on-four four with the bloodline having already turned on Sammy and then have Zayn and Owens and Drew and a fourth man on the babyface side. But what a waste that would be to not extend it out at least to Survivor Series. You know, War Games could be a big turning point, should be a big turning point in that storyline. And the bloodline kicking Sammy out of the group, not unlike how Larry Zbysko accidentally hit Bobby Eaton with the metal turnbuckle rod in that War Games match from 92 cost the Dangerous Alliance the match and led to Larry being kicked out of the group and that was the beginning of the end of the Dangerous Alliance. That's why I'm excited when I hear Triple H talk about these matches being more story-driven. The storyline potential in that men's match is huge if they do it right. Now, blood was a big part of those early War Games matches, but unless somebody gets split open hard way, it doesn't look like that's going to be a part of these. 
Uh, Triple H said, The world has changed. The world has evolved. I don't think it's necessary. There is still blood in WWE, but there are medical personnel to check on wrestlers if there is an inadvertent cut. If we have talent that gets cut, usually you'll see them roll out and they'll get looked at to make sure there's nothing dangerous. I'm just of the opinion right now, given the state of the world and the pandemic, and at the end of the day, what we do is dangerous enough without intentionally making it more dangerous. Yes, we did feature blood for a long period of time, but we have changed that practice, and it is irresponsible to go back. Now, of course, he has to say that because he's an executive in the company, and he is not going to come out and give an interview to The Ringer or any other magazine or television outlet or newspaper or online website and say, yes, we have our performers slicing their foreheads open. Okay, so he's not going to come out and say that. That's that's exactly the kind of corporate statement that I would expect. And I don't have any issue with them cutting down on blood and doing more to protect their talent. And he's right. You know, safety first. You've got, you know, it, it is a different time, the pandemic and all that he mentioned. All those things are true. I believe... When the situation calls for it, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting some color in a match. It should not be overdone like they do in AEW, where they overdo it to the point of absurdity. But if they were ever going to allow some blood, War Games is the time to do it. It adds to the drama. So I don't have any issue with them featuring some blood in the War Games match. At least in one of them. But for the first time in a very long time, I am excited for Survivor Series. And if they don't want to use William Regal's old voice to make the announcement, because nobody said it like he did, then I think it would be appropriate when the time comes for Triple H, given that he's the one who brought it back, to be the one to walk out on television and declare, War Games! I can't wait. 